Hi, this is Ram from ramkedem.com. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use the join statement. Basically, using this statement, we are able to display data from multiple tables at the same query. Let me give you an example. Say we have the following customers table and the following internet packages table. Now, suppose we want to display the customer first name, last name, and his or hers internet speed. In order to retrieve this information, we need to query both tables, customers and packages. Basically, this is what the join statement allows us to achieve. Now, before we learn how to use the actual syntax, we need to understand the basic concept regarding joining of multiple tables. If I ask you what is the internet speed of customer 1, or what is the internet speed of customer 4, you will know the answer based on this common column. Customer number 1 has the package number 20. Package number 20 has an internet speed of 50 gigabytes. Customer number 4 has the internet package 60. And package number 60 has the internet speed of 100 gigabytes. The way we make a basic connection between two different tables is based on a common column. We find the data that both tables share. And based on matching values, we can make the connection. So before we approach the actual join syntax, we need to understand the data we have in each table and find the common column, the column that allows us to make the connection between the tables. In order to find this column, we can simply browse the tables folder so we can see what columns we have in customers table and what columns we have in packages table. You can clearly see that the pack ID is the common column. We can also select few rows from each table. We can say select top five star from customers and select top five star from packages. Let's execute. And again, we can see that the common column is the pack ID column. Now that this concept is clear, let's proceed and understand how to use the join statement in order to display data from customers and packages. So let's type select from on from customers join packages on pack ID equals to pack ID and let's display the last name, the first name and the speed. Let's also add the customer ID. Okay, let's try to execute. As you can see, we are getting an error. Ambiguous column name, pack ID. Why we are getting this error? The SQL engine tells us when you mention this pack ID column, to which table should I refer? The pack ID of customers or the pack ID of packages? Same goes for this indication. Are we referring the pack ID of customers or the pack ID of packages? So in order to resolve this issue, we can use table prefix. Let's copy our previous query. And now instead of just saying pack ID, we can say customers.packid. And here again, instead of just saying pack ID, we will say packages.packid. Let's try to execute. And this time, as you can see, we are getting the expected results. Now, in order to make our query more readable, in practice, we use the table prefix in each column, not only the common columns. Let me explain why. Imagine yourself a huge query where you need to join 15 tables and display many, many columns. It would be very hard to understand this query without knowing which column belongs to which table. By using the table prefix, we can make our query more readable and clear. So, although it's not a must, Let's add a table prefix to each column. Let's say customers.customerID, customers.lastname, customers.firstname, and packages.speed. Let's execute again. And of course, we are getting the exact same results. Now, instead of specifying the entire table name, we can create something we call table alias. 
and then we can use it instead of the full table name. Let me show you what I mean. Let's copy this query. And this time, let's provide the customer table, the alias cast, and the packages table, the alias pack, for example. And now, instead of specifying the entire table name each time, we can use this table aliases. So let's use this table aliases in each column indication. Let's execute again. And we are getting the same exact results. By using the table alias, we are still clearly indicating which column belongs to each table. But instead of repeating the full table name each time, sometimes you will have tables with names like this, we are using a short and clear alias. So this is how a basic join statement should be written. Select from on. At the from clause, we are specifying the tables and their aliases. At the on clause, we are specifying the alias of each table and the common column. And at the select clause, we are specifying the columns we want to display. Keep in mind that the join on statements are some kind of an expansion to the from clause, meaning that after the from clause, we can continue and add clauses such as where, group by, having, or order by. Let me show you an example. Let's take this query. Let's copy it. And now let's say, for example, we want to display only customers with customer ID less than 100. So let's say where cost that customer ID is less than 100. Let's say we want to sort the result by the last name. We can say order by customer dot last name. Now, let's say, for example, we want to see the number of customers we have in each internet speed. So we can say select pack dot speed count star for the number of rows and group by pack dot speed. We can also restrict the query. We can say having count star is greater than 170. So just remember that after the join on statements, we can continue adding the where, group by, having, and order by clauses. So this video was an introduction to the SQL join statement. In the next videos, we are going to learn more advanced techniques. Please feel free to ask any question you may have in the comments section below. And if you are looking for a way to practice what we have just learned, in ramkelem.com you will find hundreds of exercises on many different levels. More details can be found in the video description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.